Have you ever heard a prayer say that makes you so unsettled and uncomfortable because that prayer does not agree with your mindset and your belief? There's a prayer I find in the scriptures that is so unsettling and to me it sounds like a limiting belief. In Proverbs chapter 30, Ango makes a prayer and says, Oh God, I beg two favors from you. Let me ask them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, Who is the Lord? And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. I grew up hearing a prayer that said, God, don't bless me too much so that I will not miss heaven. And I felt like, why would God not bless you too much? Or what is the belief around this? At that early age, it felt like this was such a godly prayer. It felt like, a prayer of humility, telling God, don't bless me too much because I might deny you if you bless me. It means I believe that God can bless me and make me rich. So now I am trying to limit God to tell him, please don't bless me too much. And this is a limiting belief. The first point I want you to note in this video is break off the limitation. This man was actually limited in his mind because the fear of missing God or denying God from him was from a place of his human understanding. That if God blesses him too much, he's going to deny God. And it is the same mindset that I feel like the people that said that prayer as I was growing up had because they feel like money is the root of all evil and if you are blessed with a lot of riches, you are going to deny God, you are going to be exposed to all kinds of evil but I did a video which I would like you to check up in the card above debunking the myth that money is not the root of all evil. Avarice is the root of all evil. The love of money, the trust in your riches, in your gold, in your resources, that is the root of all evil. So if you understand that, you would know that telling God to bless you too much has a purpose attached to it. The Bible says that the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and he himself, God himself, acts no sorrow with the blessings he gives to you. So if you believe that God blesses you and acts no sorrow, why are you having this limitation? Do not allow your dysfunction and your weakness and your limitation to be projected to God for you to try to limit what God can do in your life. It is a limiting belief when you start telling God, don't bless me too much because you feel like I know if you bless me too much, I know where it's going to lead to. It means your heart is not right at first. The possibility of you falling is because your heart is fixed on the wrong thing. You are trusting in your riches. You are trusting in money. And you can see this clearly because this man has this fear so glaring. And he says, God, if you make me too poor, I will go and steal. I might steal and then insult your name. It means his mind is wrong. The mindset is wrong. His mindset is on the riches, not on God. So you have to break off the limitation of settling for less than God's best for you. It is not the desire of God to give you so much potential to be productive and you are telling him, God, please, I just want a little. I don't want to walk in this potential you've given me. I do not want to express all the gifts you've placed in me. I don't want you to make me famous. I don't want you to make me rich. This is a stingy and a limiting prayer. It is a limiting belief which you have to break it off of you. The Bible talks about Jabez. He was born in sorrow, which he should have said, let me accept my condition. This is how I was born to carry heavy weight, to be depressed, to just be in a lowly place. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain and God granted his request. The best thing to do for you is, if you know your weakness, take that weakness and surrender it to God. Like Jabez said in his prayer, keep me from harm so that I will not cause pain and so that I will be free from pain. Surrender that weakness to God and allow God to bless you as much as he wants. Number two, the desire of God is for you to be blessed to be a blessing. God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous 
and you will be a blessing to others. The blessing that God gives you as a human being, as his child, as his own son or daughter, is not for you to flaunt it before people. It is not for you to flex your shoulders and show people, oh, I'm richer than you. It is not for you to go into this competitive mindset of trying to buy the latest car, build the latest house, or do the latest thing so that people will be like, oh, God really has blessed you. It's not a place of pride. It is not for you to be in a place of every year I change my cars. I do not repeat a car that I used last year for the next year. It is not to flaunt the riches. God's blessing to you is for a purpose. And he said that the purpose is for you to become a blessing to other people. God do not want to bless you and you become a container of his blessing and just hold it and keep it. Because your heart will be destroyed when you are having the mindset of hoarding the riches, of becoming a container. But by the time you know that God wants you to be a conduit of his blessing, you know that you are a pipeline whereby God's blessing flows through you and gets to other people. It keeps flowing through you and gets to other people. With that, God can trust you with his blessings to make it flow through you. And as such, you need to debunk that mindset of thinking, God, if you bless me too much, I might deny you. Nothing would make you deny God if you know that he is the source of all your blessings, he is the source of all your riches. You will only deny him when you don't see him as the source. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, it says, And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Blessed to be a blessing is the desire of God for you. Because God wants you to develop the heart of generosity whereby you are a conduit for the blessing that it brings to your life. So the next time you hear a prayer that sounds like, God, don't bless me too much, close your ears. That is not from God. That is not God's desires. How would you be generous if you do not have? How would you give to others if you don't have to eat yourself? Because you can only love others to the measure that you love yourself. As scripture says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you don't have to eat, how are you going to give to your neighbor? Because there's not a place that God is telling you, oh, disregard yourself, do not care for yourself, do not love yourself, love your neighbor. God does not tell you to disregard yourself. You are very, very hungry and you know that if you do not eat, something bad might happen, might affect your health and you'll be like, let me give this little food that I have to my neighbor. The little I have is the Christian world, my dear. My friend, nobody could do that. Even the widow, when Elijah went to meet the widow, the widow said, this little thing that I have, I want to eat it with me and my child. And after eating, we will die. This is the last I have. I can't give it to you. That is why you need to come to the mindset of knowing that God wants you to be a blessing. And to be a blessing, he has to bless you with overflow, with plenty leftovers, not just with enough, for you to live with, not just for you to have a stingy mindset because I would feel like when you say to God, don't bless me too much, it is stinginess being packaged as humility. God, don't bless me too much so that I won't deny you. God knows your capacity. And if you are really his child, he will never bless you beyond the capacity for you to handle the blessings he brings to you. He knows each of our capacity. And that is why you need to keep on building enough capacity building and creating room for the blessings of God. Because if you don't make room, the blessing will not come. And I feel like a lot of Christians are in a place whereby they are limited because they are not making room. Their heart is not being opened. Their bowels of compassion is not being opened. That's why the blessing is not flowing. Number three, mediocrity is not the same thing as contentment. This prayer, God don't bless me too much, can keep you in a place of mediocrity whereby you just settle for less. You accept the bare minimum. God, if I just have what I eat each day, I am fine. God, if I just have what I can survive with me and my children and pay their school fees, I am okay. Do not make me poor. Do not make me too rich. Let me be in the middle. I want to be a middle class person. A middle class person has never helped anybody because they cannot even help themselves. So you need to kill that mediocrity mindset whereby you try to make it look spiritual like it is a godly mindset. 
The Bible did not say you should be in such a place. The Bible talks about contentment and as it's written in 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, Yet, true godliness with contentment is itself great gain. And contentment does not mean I don't have ambitions. That is mediocrity. Mediocrity says I don't have ambition. I don't just want to seek too much. I want to just remain here. Let me find a comfort zone where I eat. The little I eat, I am fine. I am not satisfied. I don't really have peace. But I just want to be in this place because I don't want to go into something that will make me miss God. I don't want to stress myself because mediocrity can disguise as laziness. Whether you don't want to work hard, you don't want to push, you don't want to do anything. But the mindset of contentment says, I am satisfied here and I have peace here. But I also have ambition. I know that there is more. As much as I have satisfaction, that doesn't mean it is settlement. It means I am satisfied, which is I am not trying to compete. I am not trying to be envious of whoever is having better than me, doing better than me. I am just okay here and I have peace here and I have the mindset that there is more ahead for me. And when you have that mindset of contentment, you will always want to break out of your comfort zones. You have things that are ahead of you, which you are looking forward to. And each step that God takes you, you are like, I am where God wants me to be in this place. And that is not you saying, I have settled. Because God kept telling Abraham, go to where I will show you up. And Abraham kept moving his tent from one place to another to another. And God wants to have that as a mindset that he wants you to keep moving to where he wants you to be. And each place you find yourself, since you are having the right mindset, you are satisfied there till God takes you to the next place. Financially, relationship-wise, and all facets of your life. So you don't have to make friends with the mindset of mediocrity. And scripture says in Proverbs 28 verse 20, Committed and persistent work pays off. Get rich quick schemes are rip offs. Sometimes mediocrity can just make someone sit somewhere and be praying for money instead of being committed and persistent in working because it does pay off. The mediocre just want to stay somewhere, not really stress themselves, and then they are not ambitious. So anything that comes, they are okay with it. It is pertinent that you break off of the mindset of mediocrity and embrace contentment in all its truth. Which is true godliness will make you contented. Not trying to spiritualize the aspect of being poor or trying to make it look like, oh, you are a humble person because you are not out there seeking. No, be contented and know that God is the one that will bring his blessings into your life. You are not the one trusting in riches and trying to get rich by all means. Scripture says in Ephesians, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power and work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. So God wants to exceed whatever you can ask of him. Do not settle for the mindset of God don't bless me too much. Do not settle for that limiting mindset. And this, I had to come to a place for myself of telling myself such a prayer Thank God that God does not answer every stupid prayer we make. Because if he does, I don't know how it would be. Because I did pray it and it was so passionate. They made it look like this is the heart to have for God. This is where you are very humble. This is where your mindset, the goal is heaven. So you don't need to allow the riches to choke you. But had it been they told me the truth, I would have still had the right mindset and prayed the right Way, which is telling God, God, I want you to bless me too much and give me the capacity to handle your blessings. Do not let the blessings you bring to my life to come with sorrow, which is make me miss you or make me deny you or make me reject you. So in conclusion, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It is not the fear of denying God if he makes you rich. That's not the beginning of wisdom. That might be ignorance or foolishness. Do not dwell in that place because that is your human thinking. Money is not wrong to have if you have the right heart, if you are not trusting in it. Let God be the source of everything that you have. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness 
and all other things shall be added unto you. If God is your number one priority, every other thing that is added cannot make you deny him. Because you cannot deny your source if you are really anchored in him. So this should be in your mind. When God multiplies you or makes you rich, point it all back to him. Give him all the glory. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope this video is a blessing and it has opened your mind to a certain degree to see that as a Christian, it's not all things you see in the scripture that you have to accept for yourself because most of it is written for us to learn so that we can become wiser as we follow God. So do not believe this mindset that if God bless you too much, it's going to mislead you from him. Just know that God will bless you according to the capacity that you build. Thank you and bye-bye.